Hey, so welcome to the Faith and Life podcast. Greg Osborne and I are hosting this podcast, and it's an intersection we explore, the intersection between that, that, that is faith and life. There's a lot that goes into that because those intersections happen every day of our lives and in sometimes small ways, sometimes big and profound ways. And so today we're here with Aaron Wolcha. Yeah, you pronounced it correctly. Oh, do other people pronounce it incorrectly? All the time. Absolutely all the time. Your first name or last name? Last name. Yeah. Oh. People misspell my first name more often. Oh. They, they think I'm an A-A-Ron. And it's and not. And it's E-R-I-N. So. Mm. so how do they say Wolcha? Uh, I mean, most people just kind of look at it and they, they give me a look like, are you going to help me with this? <laughs> um, but it's, it, no, it's pretty simple. It's just, you, there's just a lot of consonants there, right? Yeah. So when you get uh, tripped up in the middle, I usually step up and, yeah. and Wolcha, correct I, them. Yeah. I originally thought it was a silent a, a J. Wol, uh, Wolta? I'm just joking. Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm really? Feeling... Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've heard, I've heard some different things, but people, they're definitely trying, you know, and there's, there's worse names, but exactly. Yeah. Hey, you married into it. It is my fault. Yeah. They <laughs> like to point that out. My in-laws like to point that out. Yeah. I, I had my chance and I didn't leave. So yep. yeah. Well, Aaron, your family has been a blessing to our church. You've been around here a couple of years now. Yeah. Um, I think we, we started visiting in 2019, right before the pandemic. Um, and then, you know, March 2020 happened, so everything kind of changed. Yeah. But, but yeah, I guess it's been two years. Yeah, yeah, at least three boys and a husband, and just a great family. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And what I appreciate about you, Aaron, and uh, one of the things I wanted to have a conversation with you about, and uh, there are two things. One is you just love only two things right now. No, only two things. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. I, it, it, you love our Lord. Amen. Yeah, that's for sure. That's right. Uh, you love the church that our Lord created. Yep. And the movement of this Christian movement around the world and the local expression that we call St. Luke and whatever a local yeah. expression you're part of. Um, and uh, just your uh, your love and your gift for prayer. I'm really humbled and honored that you said that because, uh, I mean, honestly, it's been... Um, my desire, like my, my faith's like walk, my desire for me to be made visible, that, that is, um, everything to God's glory, you know? Um, and so I feel like really, uh, <laughs> like lame in a lot of areas of my life. But then when I see the effect that can happen through me, um, because of, of God, mm -hmm. like that gives me a lot of hope and, and courage. Yeah. Have you always, has this always been part of who you are? Um, yeah, so a little bit. I mean, I think back to um, my upbringing. I was raised in a Baptist home. My my dad never really went to church, but my mom took my sister and I every Sunday. I specifically remember many times when I did not want to go to church at all. Um, now as a parent, I have a different perspective on that. Um and I went to church anyway. Like there was, it was never an option to not go to church. It was just like what you did. And that was the right thing to do. Um, and we were at church a lot. So um, Sunday mornings we had services and then also Sunday evenings. And a lot of times we were there um, for both of those. <laughs> like we don't really need to be at both of them, but we were there. And then on a Wednesday night, there would always be some like kids group or prayer meeting. Um, so I feel like uh, it was like an extension of our home life um, to be at church and to be engaged with the community that we had there. Um, but I, I don't know if it was necessarily real for me personally. Um, like being Baptist, like church was very, very important. Um, and, you know, I, I grew up learning this joke where someone goes into heaven and they're looking around and there's a lot of people having a good time. And then when they walk by this one door, the angel says, Shh, be quiet. And they say, it's the Baptists. They think they're the only ones here. Um, so there was some amount of like animosity is maybe too strong, but like judgment mm -hmm. 
um, towards other denominations. Um, but then I grew up in, um, you know, I had this like moment of faith and I was baptized in uh, the Baptist church. And I really knew that now I definitely didn't know at that time, but I, I kind of had this naive belief that like, we're all Christ followers. Like we should all be part of a one big body. Right. Um, and then when I went to go to college, I, I went to Mount Vernon Nazarene university and I had no idea like the level of separation between Baptists who are um, Calvinists. I hope I get this right. Calvinist. Right. And then the Nazarenes who were of a Wesleyan perspective. And it was really eye opening to have so much like bitterness within the church towards like when the people found out I was raised Baptist, they're like, oh, you were a Calvin, you know, once saved, always saved. Um, and the Wesleyans believed that they could like lose their salvation. And that was kind of a big deal for them. And they also believe in um, uh, like, it, sanctification, like, like total sanctification. So you could be made fully perfect here on earth and never sin again. Um, so that was sort of the beginning of me realizing different perspectives. Um, and then Jason and I, we met when we were 16. Um, so we have gone through a lot together. He was going to a non-denominational church, which was a little bit, um, Pentecostal. So they were speaking in tongues. There was uh, fainting in the spirit. We did go through um, like uh, like a Holy Spirit baptism type scenario. I'm probably like going on way too long, but I hope I'm answering your question. Yeah, you are. Go for it. Yeah. So, um, but then when we got married, we we're like, all right, we've been through all of these different, um, you know, backgrounds, but what is like the true calling for us? And uh, yeah, to say that we had it all figured out, like, no, not at all. But um, we just went to different churches. Uh, we really didn't feel like the Baptist church was a right fit for us. We really didn't feel like the Nazarene church was a right fit for us. Like, no offense to them. They're they're great. I have love. I have so much love in my heart. But for us and our family, we just kind of went to different churches. And uh, we felt really loved and accepted at... Um, Messiah Lutheran in Reynoldsburg. And then next thing you know, we're going there for 10 years. Yeah. Wow. And so, that's, a, that's a big change from Baptist <laughs> and Pentecostal, yeah, right. speaking in tongues, Absolutely. baptizing the spirit, yeah. the whole thing. And Nazarene, it's, it's a different, different uh, tribe of people. We did, we did for a brief stint, go to an Episcopalian church too. Oh, and I wow. think that was our first uh, sort of dip our toe into a sort of liturgical service. And we appreciated the awe and wonder um, and holiness and reverence, you know, that some some churches are kind of lacking. You don't have that separation between a true holy God, you know? Um, so yeah, I hope that answered your question. Yeah. Yeah. So you experienced the whole breadth, not everything, not, the well, breadth yeah. <laughs> of the Christian, the Christian, um, uh, denomination spread, denominational yeah. spread, yeah. but certainly some major parts of it, um, and with varied expressions of how. Absolutely. It, it, yeah. And, and so if I'm hearing you right, you take, what you're taking away from it is just this broad sense of God is involved in all these expressions oh, yeah, in various absolutely. ways. And in that, in that amazing. That yeah. Amazing. And I, I've taken a lot of hope in uh, the way that Paul wrote about the body of Christ and uh, different purposes, like a hand having a certain purpose and a foot having a certain purpose. And I, the way that I envision it is sort of that expression within denominations. I mean, for a long time, I sort of wrestled with like, how does God let it happen that his people are so divided and really taking hope and like the work that is being done in different denominations that is beneficial in different ways. And like, not everybody can be a foot and not everybody's going to be a, a mouth or a nose. <laughs> I'm not saying that I know like which denomination is which part of the body, but you know, I can see how there's value in that. And then also on top of that, like people worship and they, um, you know, come to know God in different ways. And, and it's an individual relationship, right? So whatever way that God can use to have a relationship with his people, like that's all gravy, you know, it's all good. I mean, think about the the the, 
the way the church was expressed the years after Jesus's resurrection. Uh, in the book of, Pen book of Acts, for example, after Pentecost, and as the church began to spread in the first century and in the second century, it started to, based on where somebody lived, the expression was slightly different. So that the okay. church showed yeah. up differently in Damascus as it did to, in Jerusalem or Ephesus. Yeah. The way that community worshipped and all that was different. They know hit that historically. So even in the first cool. first hundred years, right. there is some separation of expression of things. So yeah, I'm that, that's interesting. And that's how people are. People yeah, exactly. want to find their tribe. They want to you know be in a comfortable place. Right. But the unity is the same. That is, yeah, and, one God, one Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and and that. Yeah, that's awesome. And what about prayer? When did prayer become like this thing? You go, whoa! I have a gift for this. Uh oh! Wow. Okay. <laughs> Thank you that you said I have a gift for it. Um. Okay. Yeah. Something that's important for me and my faith journey has been um, a friend of mine, uh, Sarah. She lived across the street from us. Uh, starting, I think she moved. Gosh, I don't know the exact year, but it's been like eight years now that I've been a part of this group of women. Um, and we meet together about once a week praying, um, you know, lifting up each other's burdens to the Lord. And uh, it's it's also interdenominational. So it's people from not it is only women. Sorry. Sorry, guys. But, uh, you know, we're coming together as moms, as women. So we have similar um, life circumstances and. Um, I was really intimidated, <laughs> extremely intimidated, you know, meeting with these women. Uh, when I first started going, um, they seemed to just be like on fire for the Lord. And you could see the manifestation of this like godliness. Um, so I've always struggled too with the anxiety and, um, specifically social anxiety. So I just left that at the feet of the cross. Like I just said, God, I can't pray in front of other people. I am like an absolute nervous wreck doing this, but here we are every week sitting in a circle and like we're praying together and it just started happening. You know, I just said, God, I cannot do this on my own. And he hears my cry, you know, he hears my prayer. Um, So some of that is just like, uh doing it like stepping out in faith i can't just keep my mouth silent and 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 hold it in um i think in the old testament there's a verse about like like fire shut up in my bones you know so when i've asked god for help he's delivered and sometimes uh i wish i didn't have that you know because the nerves in me still want to like hold back um but it's so cool to see that God can do amazing things despite my limitations. Yeah, I think you sound you said something that is really helpful. You know, because over the years, I have talked to people, and maybe we all have that they'll say, "Well, I don't want to pray in public." You know, yeah, I don't, I don't pray in public, or I don't, and and or I don't pray, pray spontaneously. I don't, I don't respect that. I mean, sure. I completely respect it. It's not easy. To, no, to always no. do that. You have to kind of empty yourself. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then what you said was like you said, well, that's where I where I've been, and I'm just gonna let let God know that God, I don't, I don't have, I'm nervous about this. Absolutely. Yeah. And you let that go, <laughs> and God goes, okay, let's right. See, like, let's see what else I mean, it, nothing is new to God, right? right? He made me. He knows exactly the way that I am. So if I'm honest with Him and bring that to Him, like. He's not going to be like, oh, wow, I didn't know. I didn't know you had, <laughs> you know, but he, he hears us and he like takes our hand and guides us through that. And I think it takes a level of humility. Like uh, I can grow, um, but I'm, I'm not perfect. God, you can help me grow. Right. And even the Apostle Paul writes, we do not know how to pray as we ought. Yeah, right. but our spirit, like... The spirit yeah. intercedes for us with sighs and groans, too. Oh, yeah. there, Those are us. definitely times for that, for sure. You yeah. know, um, I remember uh, growing up reading about prayer, um, and, and Paul also wrote, like, pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. And I always thought, oh, man, the bar is set really high. <laughs> like, how am I supposed to do that? But then I realized, too, as I've grown in my faith, like, the prayers that God wants are not like fancy. You don't have to kneel and um, 
go through a certain like procedure. He's just asking for a relationship. So if you could just like take a moment and say, God, man, I am really struggling or thanks. The sunrise today was great. You know, that connection with God grows your spirit and grows you in your walk. Just those little moments. It doesn't have to be a, a big production. Right. Oh, that's that's interesting. That's that's true. It doesn't have to be. Uh, I can pray with my eyes open by walking. Yeah, right. I pray while washing the dishes quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and I pray while driving most of the time. <laughs> and uh, God still hears. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But isn't that, I mean, our podcast is called Faith and Life, the intersection of that. Isn't that what it is? Sure, Prayer I guess. It is the intersection yeah. of faith yeah. and life. It is that conversation, that, that intersection where we notice something, we see something, we're made aware of something. And in that moment, man, it's time to pray about that. Yeah. I mean, it could be gratitude. It could be mm -hmm. um, asking for help. Um, and again, like the spirit cries out. Those moments when we don't have the right words, like just open yourself up. The humility before God um, goes a long way. Yeah. Yeah. What about answered prayer or unanswered prayer for you? Um. Yeah. I mean, some prayers I think are unanswered, but just with time. You know, um, I've seen God work some really cool things. Eight years being in a group of women where we're praying every week, um, you really get back some some amazing praise reports. Uh, and I think, I, I don't know the exact author, but I did read something about, um, maybe it was in the Alpha group, actually. Like, when I pray, coincidences happen. And when I don't pray, those coincidences don't happen. Um like it was actually uh, last fall that I was, uh, you know, asking God to help me with a, a health illness that my father had. And I was just walking and I, I ran into a friend just randomly. I mean, it was a coincidence, but you can look at it and you say, oh, my gosh, she was actually living out of town. She just so happened to drive past the same time I was walking to get my kids from school. Um, and you that is not just a coincidence like those sort of serendipitous moments where god shows up to connect you with people um and bring encouragement oh, yeah. um so that's one tiny little answered prayer and i think you know everybody has struggles right so we pray for god to help us with lots of things and um sometimes we don't see that and we think well god maybe isn't listening but i he does listen like you know, sometimes I think he saves us from a lot of heartache by not giving us exactly what we want. Um, so, you know, everybody wishes for more money or wishes for more time or any sort of better thing. But God sometimes is a little bit like a true father. Like he gives you what you really need, not mm -hmm. just what you want. That, and you read the word, you use the word wishes. Oh, yeah. And, and, I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's important because how similar or dissimilar is prayer to a wish, do you think? Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, I wonder if a wish is, I'm just, you know, spitballing here, I but mean, uh, a wish is kind of selfish, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but sometimes a prayer has to be less selfish, or maybe it becomes less selfish when you say it aloud. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the answer either. I mean, I just, the question. You just want to ask me a difficult question. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I got more. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Here we go. <laughs> no, but it, it, because, you know, any prayer is better than no prayer, I think. Yeah. Um, and I think sometimes even my prayers can be sound more, more like a wish, like a, I wish upon a star kind oh, of yeah, feeling. Yeah. And, and it's really not the desire of my heart. Well, are you expecting like a result or are you just kind of putting it out there? Because right. I think sometimes too, like faith is a really important in your prayers. Like if you're just saying, Oh, it would be really nice if I had a better carpet in my house. Like, <laughs> I don't know, but, but is it actually like you're believing that God could deliver on that? You know, that's the anchor to it. Sure. You're right. The, yeah. The wish is more just kind of like, I'm going to put it out there. I wish I had new carpet in my house. You say wish on a star and you just see this little child of like yeah. this faith and what, like, you yeah. know, right. Yeah. But then when we start going, I, I'm I'm trusting because God's word is certain that God is good and God is generous. God, um, I, I don't know if this would be the prayer request, but we need new carpet. You know? 
<laughs> I mean, like, I have a cat, so I, I don't know why carpet came to my mind. It's the funniest thing. But yeah, and the carpet upstairs is like ripped up in our house. And uh, I have those moments where I see it. Everybody has those moments in their life when they see something. They're like, oh, man, I just really wish this was better. Like, wouldn't it, my life would be better if this thing was better. Um but yeah, like a perfect father, God doesn't fix everything automatically for us. No. Yeah. Isn't prayer amazing though? Yeah, it is. I, I mean, I don't even know how to like go on to more detail about it, but yeah, it is amazing. I mean, so it's so mysterious and yet it's so human. Right. And there is, but God gave it the opportunity to engage it. Yes. I That's mean, amazing. it's it's amazing because he is a creator God who made the entire universe and he didn't just like disappear. You know, he's still there waiting to have a conversation with us, waiting to have a relationship with us like little people, you know, uh, and, and there's like billions of people in the world. And he's totally cool with listening to any of us. And he never rests and he never sleeps. And he can hear us at three in the morning, same as three in the afternoon. Um, yeah, that's really, really cool. Yeah. Absolutely. There's no perfect prayer. It's just simply a prayer that comes from our hearts. Yeah. 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 Well, I think there is a place for like scripted prayer too. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I, you know, looking at like, uh, Luther's morning prayers, um, I think it's in the small catechism. Um, my husband, bless him. He like printed it off and laminated it and put it up on our refrigerator. So sometimes it, like scripted prayer can really open our minds, open our hearts to something that you aren't thinking about. And it uses, God can use that as a jumping off point for other things. Um, so it's been beneficial in my life too, just to say, yeah, specifically word by word, like, thank you, God, for this. Thank you that you've given me this, that I don't take things for granted, you know? Yep, yeah, absolutely. That's a, well said, very well said. Aaron, thank you. For being here, for being, having a conversation welcome. about yeah. prayer and the church. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. And thanks to everybody to listening to the Faith and Life podcast. And we'll have more conversations like this on different topics as we move on. Thanks, right. Aaron. It's been a pleasure. Thanks.